to get inspired and track the trends of the creative world. And here's what you're going to see in this episode. Our creative talk guest is an amazingly unique Korean artist who mixes paintings and performance art in his exhibitions. Top 3 pick of this week is going to introduce you to the best books to become a self-taught artist. So you need to stay till the end of this episode if you want to get those golden nuggets. So let's jump into the first section. Today I'm happy to announce that our first guest for our creative talk show is a young artist that I know from when I was studying in Seoul National University. We were both part of the fine arts department. He's a young artist who does lots of live paintings about like portraits and stuff, which is really cool. I'm sure you're gonna like it. Soon I'm going to ask him about his upcoming exhibition, so stay tuned. Hi Gyu, how are you? Welcome to Creative Talk. Hi, <laughs> It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. When, when did you graduate the school? I think it was like five years ago. I don't want people to know my age, but it was, I guess, five years ago. Okay, tell me what you're drinking. Now I'm drinking the iced coffee. Iced coffee, okay. I'm having some very traditional tea here. I made a tea for you as well, but you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how is your life in this quarantine? But mm. it's cold or not cold? In the studio, I 18 days. I was stuck artist. I was quarantine. I was in quarantine. I I always think that like, in any sort of situation, artists are the ones who can survive because like art artist life is not dependent on anything it's just you and your work so you can do it whenever in whatever situation right yeah you're right mm. you're right so if you want to see Gyu's journey in those 18 days that he was just by himself in his studio you can go to his instagram page um i'll put the link down below and you can check out the day i'm gonna check it out i was like why is it like days? Like, what does it mean? So now I know. So how did you decide that you want to be an artist? What was the case? I really liked it when I was young. I didn't like drawing. I didn't do it, but I didn't do it. I didn't do it, so I didn't do it. I said to my mother, I want to go to art college. So I went to art college. What was her reaction? That's really important because most of parents don't like it. 어머니가 굉장히 싫어하셨죠. 이대 간다고. 그러 그러시겠죠. 사실 아티스트라고 하면은 이제 돈을 목적으로 사는 직업이 아니잖아요. 굉장히 힘들게 살게 될 거라고 생각을 하셨던 것 같아요. So Gyu had like many solo exhibitions, and he had two last year. 이번에 solo exhibition 동안 I met my sponsor. You found a sponsor with your solo exhibitions. That's amazing. So it changed. Now you have someone to support you as an artist. You've been really hard working, so you do deserve it. Sponsor를 만나고 난 이후에도 저는 hard working 하고 있고요. 그렇죠. 왜냐하면 이분은 어떻게 보면 나한테 
인베스트먼트를 해주시는 거기 때문에 음. 저는 거기에 분명히 리스톤을 해야 된다고 생각을 해요. The next question is actually about your live performance. First of all, do you think about the concept of what you're going to draw before going there, or do you go there and like then decide on the spot? 그 자리에서 결정해요. <gasps> That's like I was like, there is no way he's deciding it on the spot, but really, <웃음> you're doing that. That's so cool. 모든 게다 즉흥적이요. 라이브라는 거는 말 그대로 이제. 생생하게 라이브하다라는 뜻이기 때문에 라이브 is live. You have no plan. Yeah. So you go there and like because you should watch one of his performances. Like he's just going there. There is a big screen or like boom or whatever it is, and then the audience are gathering around him and he starts to paint. 그럼 사람들 시선 이런 거 신경 안 써요? 막 이렇게 뭔가 I I would be stressed. <laughs> I never mind. 나는 그냥 나은 거예요. Wow. Do you think it, it like you had some stress, but then after practicing being on a stage, it just faded away? 그러니까 원래는 스트레스 받았죠. 근데 연극을 하면서 또 이제 락 밴드를 하면서 이제 스테이지에서 이제 플레이 기타 하면서 많이 극복이 됐고 그리고 미술학원 선생님을 굉장히 오래 했어요. 아이들 앞에서 제가 계속 그림을 그려서 보여줘야 되는 시스템이었거든요. 그런 것도 분명히 익숙했죠. 지금의 라이브 퍼포먼스를 할때 필요 이상 뭐 익사이딩 하다던가 아니면 스트레스 받는 일들이 별로 없어요. 그리고 생각을 하고 현장에서 라이브 페인팅을 하면 은 좋은 그림이 안 나와요. So you did give it a try? 첫 번째. 첫 번째? And it didn't come out good. 이미지 트레이닝을 한 거죠. I got image training before the live painting. Live라는 현장 자체가 쉬운 게 아니죠. It's not easy. And then you're like, if it doesn't go the way you plan for it, then you get like a stress, really. But when people look at it, what do they think? What's the reaction of the audience to your live performance? It's interesting. It's really cool. It looks really cool. <laughs> 여름에는 만약에 퍼포먼스가 잡혀 있으면은 한국 여름이 굉장히 이제 습하고 덥잖아요. 맞아요. 그림 그리면 이제 이제 그 습이 나요. 막 너무 많이 나서 제가 옷을 벗어 버리거든요 위에 거를. 라이브 할 때. 응, so while you're on live perform, you suddenly like take off your clothes. Oh. 네. <웃음> So if you're in Seoul, you can go and visit Gyu's gallery and live performance. He just promised he might take off his clothes, so another <laughs> motivation for you to go. <laughs> what kind of artist do you think you are? What kind of mood? Like dark, happy, philosophical? I focus on focus. Dark side of human. Dark side of human. 사람이 갖고 있는 가장 어두운 부분에 집중을 하려고 해요. 사회적인 동물이기 때문에 자신이 가지고 있는 가장 포지티브한 사이드만 보여주려고 하는 것 같아요. Like the best side of themselves. 본인이 가지고 있는 dark side나 아니면 네가티브한 부분들에 있어서는 그것을 다른 사람들에게 보여주는 걸 자신이 약점을 드러낸다라고 생각을 하는 것 같아요. 제가 봤을 때. 그래서 미술품 제가 만들어내는 그림들 앞에서만큼은 어두운 면, dark side를 여과 없이 보여주고 어디언스들한테 제가 질문을 던지는 거죠. And you? 하고. So like. And you? When I look at your portraits, I should see some dark side of myself, or should I start thinking about what is the dark side of me that I don't want to put it on the wall for people to see? So the last question of today is, is there anything that you want to mention from this platform? Anything you just want to say to the audience that I didn't ask? 개인적으로는... 빨리 이 상황이 끝났으면 좋겠지만 빨리 끝나지는 않을 것 같아요. That's what I think too, yeah. 그리고 지금 신아 씨하고 5년 만에 만나서 이렇게 스카이프를 통해서 대화를 하고 했는데 지금 이 기록들이 나중에 시간이 아주 많이 지나서 미술사에서 History of Art에서 아주 중요한 순간 중에 하나가 될수 있도록 만드는 것 또한 
제 리스폰스빌리티라고 생각해요. <웃음> That's really cool. Yeah, I think I think we are making history. We would really look forward to your future exhibition and see how you put all these things, crazy things that we experienced throughout this year. We want to see how you reflect it in your work. So I'll just um, put the links down below to Gyu's page. Please go and visit him and um, plan for his next exhibition. I hope we see you in Sydney one day, one of your exhibitions. I know you want to go to New York, but I would like to see you here. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? It's a silk. It's a silk. It's a silk. It's a silk. It's a bit wrinkly now, but I need to reframe it and put it somewhere. I'm really proud of it because it's something like Korean and like so exotic to people here. <laughs> At that time, you painted it well. So well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually really good at painting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to our Cafe Classic Q. I wish that they can see your exhibitions in Sydney one day. It was great to have this creative talk with you. Have a colorful day. Thank you. Thank you. Come to see you. <clears throat> Top 3 pick of this week is about books that can help you become a self thought artist. We all have a bit of more time as the social times are reduced and it is a great opportunity to grow some skills that you always wanted to grow. So here are the best three books of all times that will be sufficient for you to start learning art skills or developing the ones that you already have. Want to create figures? Then you need the book of anatomy for the artist. This book, which I'm still using up to this day, was introduced to us as a sculpture student in the uni and is for anyone who is interested in making human figures art. Now, why you need this book? Because you need to know the visual details of human body and know how to recreate it in your art. And this book explains how great painters started developing techniques to observe better and build up the layers of human body in their works. This is a great book to refer to and if you also don't have a model in front of you, it has tons of photos that you can refer to from different angles and use it in your art. Wanna write about art? Then you need the book of How to Write About Contemporary Art by Gilda Williams. Whether you want to start a blog or want to be able to write better descriptions for your own artworks, this book can help. It gives you examples from the critics, writings and articles and teaches you on how to see the chosen topic better as that is what you will end up putting into words. So if you master that, then finding the right words won't be hard. Want to learn how to sketch your concepts quickly? Then you need Drawing and Designing with Confidence by Mike W. Lin. This book was recommended by my teacher when I was studying architecture in the college and is absolutely the simplest way to sketching and learning how to communicate your ideas with simple sketches. It also helps you with perspective, coloring, rendering and so many things so you get one book and that becomes your bible to design process. We're back to say goodbye, but before that, if you want to see this episode with more details, you can visit shinaflight.com. That's where you can get everything from the links to the behind the scenes photos, all in one place. Also, just right below this video in the captions, you will be able to get all the useful links from this episode. For next week, please share your photos by using hashtag shinafly that you took yourself that are related to one current issue that we have in the world. It can be your own artwork even and I will share your photos in the next episode and give you a shout out. I would love to hear your voice and communicate with you in the comment section and other platforms. Be safe and I'll see you all next time. Have a colorful time. Bye!